This is Dr. Andrew Yun at St. John's, and we're going to have a brief discussion about the utilization of adjunct screw fixation in acetabular replacement and total hip replacement. Or to put more simply, whether or not to place a screw in the cup for added fixation. And I'll take you a little bit about our thought process as well as the radiographic appearance of screws. Okay, so here we're looking at the outer or the external aspect of an acetabular component. So there's an inner aspect right here into which a polyethylene shell will go. So this is the concave area of the acetabular, but this is the convex. This is the part that goes into the pelvis. And we see two main things here. One, we see this roughened sandpaper type surface. This macro texture is what the bone of the acetabulum will grow into to create a biologic interlock. But the other thing that happens is you can see little holes here through which a screw can be placed to increase fixation. So again, we have a cup, which is a hemisphere. On the inside, we place a polyethylene liner, but for the sake of this discussion, we're gonna talk about the convex or the outer side. We have a roughened macro texture here into which bone will grow over time, but then we also have holes to create the option of placing a screw into the pelvis to augment the fixation of this cup. And that's what we'll be talking about, whether or not to use these screws to increase the fixation of this cup in the acetabulum. So I'll show you what a screw looks like. So it's right here. So when we look at a pelvis or a hip replacement, we see one on the right, one on the left, and we can see there's a stem going down the canal. We can see the cup, we can see the ball in the socket, cup, ball in the socket. But in addition, on this side, we can see a screw going through the cup into the pelvis. And so this is what we're talking about. Now, a cup can have natural intrinsic stability because of the way the acetabulum is prepared and because of the roughened surface on the periphery of the cup. But a screw can also be placed, if necessary, to augment that fixation. And that's what that looks like. So with every process in surgery or techniques, there are always trade-offs. So the screw has the potential to augment stability in an unstable cup. So it can increase the amount of fixation in a cup that feels unstable. But at the same time, we also recognize that there are increased risks of putting in a screw. And to mitigate these risks, uh, acetabular safe zones have been defined. Um, this one is defined by Rubash, and this is the oldest system, where when we're looking at the side of the pelvis, we identify this landmark, the anterior superior iliac spine, and then we draw a straight line from that landmark to the posterior portion of the fovea, which is an internal landmark in the acetabulum. Then we draw a line perpendicular to that to make four quadrants. And these quadrants are important because it tells us which areas are safe here and here, and which areas are unsafe. This is the safest area because this area only has pelvic bone stock. This area is a little less safe, but there's still pelvic bone stock. This area is unsafe and this area is unsafe. Why? Because here we're looking at the outside of the pelvis. And if we were to flip this around, we'd see the inside of the pelvis. Okay. And here we see the external iliac veins running. And so if we put a screw through this area, then there's always a possibility that it could puncture one of these vessels. And in this area, we see that there are the circumflex or the obturator arteries here. And then there's a risk of puncturing one of the arteries in that area. And so anytime we have to place a screw, we're trying to minimize the potential risk of the screw causing some type of neurovascular damage. We identify a safe zone anatomically based on the superior iliac spine and the fovea, a perpendicular line to identify this posterior superior quadrant. We try to place screws in this quadrant when necessary. If we're really needing to augment fixation, we can place one posterior inferiorly. We always avoid this area because of the potential risk. Now, placing them in this area and this area does not eliminate the risk. We're just anatomically decreasing the risk of going into no, any known vascular structure. And so that's the trade-off or the risk of placing screws. So given that the priority is to achieve stable fixation of the cup into the acetabulum, and also to minimize the risk of any neurovascular injury, we typically do not use screws. Both are acceptable forms of fixation. Both are very reasonable to do. And if a screw is necessary, we will not hesitate to put one in to increase fixation. 
in an unstable cup. But the majority of times we find that by carefully preparing the acetabulum and using a cup that has a well-known texture to create a mechanical and predictable interface with the acetabulum, screws are for the majority of patients unnecessary. And it is not required, the screws are not required as long as the cup shows immediate press fit stability. So in summary, screws are a possible form of additional fixation for acetabular cup placement. The primary goal of all acetabular cup placements are to get a stable interface, a stable construct between the cup and the pelvis. If that interface is not stable, then screws are absolutely necessary and all surgeons, including us, will place an additional screw to increase the level of fixation. However, in the majority of cases, a stable interface can be obtained and so screws become optional. And given that screws as an intervention always carry a probability, even a small probability of neurovascular injury, in our own practice, we will avoid using screws in the setting of a stable cup pelvis interface. Neither option is wrong. It's all about balancing stability and trade-offs. And that can help you understand the different appearance on x-rays, why some have screws and some don't, when you're evaluating these on your own. Thank you.